Hi YouTube, so uh, back for another follow-up and uh, we're going to do some proper science here now. So uh, the uh, hypothesis in the uh, second video I made in this series, I think, was that uh, the blue colour here is less clear, makes the effect less, a bit less clear because it's darker. And uh, I originally pointed out that trying this effect with pure red, pure green or pure blue it seemed very clear in red and blue, but the, the green, sort of very clear in red and green, but the blue was less clear. And various people pointed out that, uh, oh yes, that's because blue is, uh, just naturally appears darker to the human eye due to rods and cones and things. And there's various graphs you can find online. And you quickly get down into the weeds of uh, human color perception and the way the uh, human eye responds to different wavelengths and so on. It's all very complex as it turns out. Um, but uh, so to try and look at that a bit more in the second video, I added uh, hue, saturation and luminance sliders here, the HSL color model, to try and see if uh, trying the effect with different colors all with the same HSL lightness value would have a sort of similar effect in terms of how visible this uh, moving lines illusion would be with those different colors. But it still seemed in that video that uh, even at the same lightness value, the blue was still less clear than the red and the green. Various people pointed out on that video that HSL is actually a very bad model in terms of uh, the way it uh, models human perception and that actually the lightness, different colours with the same lightness in the HSL model can appear very different uh, brightness to the human eye. So this was another discovery. I'm learning a lot about all this. And the comments on that video were that there's another newer colour space called OK Lab that was developed specifically and fairly recently to be a better colour model than HSL and various other models that have been around since sort of 60s, 70s, 80s. So I have now in this uh, version of the software implemented the OK Lab model, which you see here is defined by the three coordinates are called L for lightness and then just A and B, which control uh, aspects of the colour that is produced. So A goes between, I think it's more green and more red, green at one end and red at the other. B goes from blue at one end and red at the other. And there's all lots of science behind all this, lots of uh, mathematics goes into defining what actual color you should see on the screen based on the three uh, values of these parameters. You can look up all the details on the uh, various OK Lab references online. But what we're going to try and do today is look at what happens if we try this um, spinning cube effect with a variety of colors, all with the same OK Lab luminance. So if I move this uh, luminance value down to quite a low value here, you can see there's a very sort of dim gray square uh, cube moving on the screen now. If I switch on the uh, switch off the background arrays, you can see we've got a fairly dim. Let me just make that a little bit brighter because you can barely see it at all. So you can see there's a cube spinning on the screen now, but it's quite hard to see because the color is so dark. As with the previous videos, it seems that the the luminance and the the contrast between the black pixels and the not very bright color pixels is what makes the effect hard to see. Uh, but now if I move this B slider back here so we get a blue effect, we get some brighter blues showing up, which we'll talk about later. But if I erase and unerase, we'll see again, we've got a sort of fairly dark blue color and the effect is not particularly, um, not particularly standing out. Now if I change back to a sort of gray and go for a red at the same sort of luminance, so we've got a red color now, but with the same luminance according to the OK Lab model. And I think you'll agree that it's kind of a similar 
level of effect now this this red is actually quite a dark red as you can see from the RGB sliders we've got very little even less red in this color than there was blue in the blue version and uh, we get a similarly kind of weak effect with the the, the the POV illusion and if I go back and try that again with uh, green again at the same sort of OK Lab lightness value in the previous videos the green was the the most effective color it was the brightest it appears the brightest to the human eye because human eye is most sensitive to green but in this case using the uh, the OK Lab sort of dark green according to the OK Lab luminance value the lightness value it's basically no more effective than the red and blue versions were so I think that's very interesting I think it's a bit of a a win for the uh, the OK Lab model. It certainly seems to match up according to the, the way this illusion works. If we assume that the the original hypothesis was correct, that uh, the more luminant colour makes the effect stronger, and the the, the least luminant colour makes it weaker, then that certainly seems to correlate very well with the OK Lab lightness values here. This test pattern here also makes uh, some interesting viewing in terms of the OK Lab model. So we've got lots of different colours here. It's similar to the previous video. We've got the same set of uh, 35 colours it is in this case. Drawing lines vertically going left to right and then horizontally going uh, from top to bottom. The same colours in the same order. And again we see the diagonal across through the middle is all black because uh, each colour XOR with itself gives black uh, but uh, the, the, the bit more structure here each set of seven lines here there's five sets of seven different colors at different luminance levels so the first seven colors here uh, are all at luminance one in the OK Lab model and then the second set of seven bars are exactly the same hue the same A and B values but with lightness 0 0.8 and then 0 0.6, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 for the last ones here which are, you can barely see, they're very dim obviously. And then going down we've got exactly the same set of colours repeated. So you can see some interesting patterns here and it would explain a bit about what was happening in the, uh, the spinning cube just now when I was varying the colour. So you can sort of see at the top left here we've got colours with high luminance being XORed with other colours with high luminance and that generally results in a fairly dark colour as you can see just as a colour can XORed with itself goes completely to, to black a high luminance colour XORed with another high luminance colour generally gives you a pretty low luminance or almost black or dark grey or dark blue a couple of exceptions like this red popping out here but in general that seems to be the pattern and similarly as you go towards the bottom right of the screen here we've got low luminance colours being XORed with other low luminance colours and you just get another low luminance colour in the middle there's a sort of a slightly lighter blue popping out here but not much lighter in general when you XOR the low luminance colours together you just get more muddy low luminance colours but what gets more interesting is sort of in this middle section here where we're XORing sort of moderately luminant co colours, so this sort of 0 0.8, 0 0.6 luminance with other 0 0.8 or 0 0.6 luminance colours and here there seems to be a lot more variety, you get a lot more brighter colours popping out so you've got this sort of quite a bright pink here emerging from a sort of a, a dullish blue and a dullish green resulting in quite a bright pink and bright yellows popping out here, bright greens popping out uh, so that's why when we uh, see the, uh, if I bring my configuration dialog back, when we see the fairly low luminance colours here being XOR by itself, you just get the colour and black as expected. Uh, but if I start increasing the luminance a little bit, we suddenly get these other sort of uh, much brighter shades appearing. So if I turn off the background of rage, you'll see this, this colour is actually varying very smoothly from 
a green over to a sort of brown to a red. But when you see that being XORed with itself, or with pre with very slightly sim slightly different versions of itself, you get some much brighter colours suddenly popping out. Which is why you suddenly am just burying burying these things very gently, but then suddenly that sort of went to a very light blue for no obvious reason. And if I keep moving this around, you'll see at other times it suddenly get a brighter pink appeared there, and uh, other brighter colours are suddenly pop out. And it's all just due to the maths of the way, as we looked at in a previous video, you can go back and refer to that. As, uh, it's all to do with the way the bit patterns of the different colours XOR together to produce different colours. If you have high values where the high bits of the binary value are set, they tend to cancel out. And if you have lots of dark colours where the high bits of the colours are all zeros, then they, they're just not they don't affect each other at all. But if you have a sort of in the middle where you've got some high bits set and some of the high bits not set, then you can get these uh, sudden big changes in the colours. So, all good fun, and uh, hopefully that uh, answers some questions a lot of people had about uh, what would happen if I did this with OK Lab colours. Now you know. So another popular comment on the previous videos was that the when investigating how the effect was, um, how visible it was with a more complex 3D shape rather than just this simple cube, a lot of people said, oh well, it's because it's a wireframe and you need to uh, get rid of the hidden lines and then it'll be much easier to see, which uh, certainly seems like a reasonable thing to suggest. So I've gone ahead and implemented uh, the sort of hidden line removal, which wasn't that easy. I, this is all custom code that I've written just for this video. I didn't really intend to make it into a full-on 3D graphics engine, and uh, it certainly isn't. The hidden line removal or hidden face removal is uh, a little bit crude and doesn't work perfectly, but it does work. Um, so let's have a look. So here's the cube again. So I'll turn off the uh, background erase. Let's make that a bit smaller. So you can see the effects as before. You can see the spinning cube pretty clearly. And if I turn off the wireframing, you can still see it pretty clearly. Maybe it does make it a bit easier to follow what's the front and what's the back, possibly. Now if we switch back to the uh, Suzanne, the uh, monkey head from Blender. I'll make these lines a bit smaller as well. And we'll turn off the background arrays again here. Let's see if this is any easier to see now that you haven't got the uh, all the mess of the other hidden lines in the back of the wireframe showing. I think possibly it is a little bit easier, but not brilliantly easier. I think that's still quite hard to see. It is for me anyway. Try to make that a little bit brighter perhaps, given what we were just saying about all the uh, the luminance affecting the, the, the uh, illusion. So you can see something rotating, you can sort of make out the ears and the chin, but it's still quite hard to spot, I think. Uh, but let's try the sphere. I think the sphere makes quite a big difference. So if we switch wireframing back off, go to the sphere. So in this case, as in the previous video, it just looks like there's lots of things all moving all around. If you see it without the uh, the background arrays, you can see obviously seeing the the faces at the front, but you're also seeing the lines, the faces at the back moving in the opposite direction. If we'll turn the wireframing off, this all becomes a lot simpler. It's sort of much easier to see in this mode, definitely. And then with the background arrays turned back on again, I think this one is a lot easier to see. So I think there's definitely something to be said for that. Obviously, uh, with the wireframing turned off, um, there's just less to see, there's less for your vision to process, I guess, so it makes sense that it would be easier to follow. And certainly when, as in the case of the sphere, without with the wireframing turned on, there's just too many lines all moving in opposite directions and uh, too many things all changing at once. So again, there you go, everyone who asked about that, now you know.
So another interesting comment that came in just earlier today, in fact, was uh, what would happen if we blurred the screen while this effect was showing. So blurring the screen here, I think you can see it still shows up very clearly, which is a bit of a surprise to me. And even if we make the blur much deeper, it still shows up very clearly. And uh, on the split screen version here, you can see the uh, combination of the two sides matching up pretty clearly and uh, the rotation is very clear. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting effect. Thanks for that comment. So I also thought it'd be fun to try out this effect in real life. So I printed out some frames of the uh, Cobra ship rotating here onto photo paper to make a flip book. And uh, that all works as you'd expect. Um, works just as well in real life as it does on the video clip shown. But uh, when I printed it out with the XORD cube rotating around to make a flip book, uh, the effect doesn't show up at all in real life. Uh, it does show up a little bit on the video frames here, which I guess is to do with the uh, the camera recording them as individual frames and the image changing very abruptly from one frame to the next. But I think in real life, the way that the, um, the you know one page slides across your line of vision before the, the the frame below gets revealed is enough to sort of cancel out the edge detection or the uh, the change detection in the same way that some people said blinking their eyes quickly uh, destroys the effect as well. So uh, yeah, that was interesting. It doesn't work at all in real life. So that's uh, the end of another video. I'm not sure how many more of these I can uh, make on this subject, but uh, if people keep leaving interesting comments, I'll uh, keep reading them and uh, keep maybe exploring more of these different effects. So thanks very much for all the comments so far, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See you next time.